Hey everyone, welcome back to Bono's Tech Stuff. In this video, we're going to make our own VPN server out of this, a Raspberry Pi Zero. Today, I'm going to start a new series called Weekend Project. It won't happen every weekend, but Whenever I have a cool project, I'll make a video on it, and if that project interests you, you can follow along and do it yourself at home. Now, today for the first project, we're going to be turning this Raspberry Pi Zero into a VPN server. The steps to this project are gather the parts, enable SSH on our Pi, forward the ports from our router, configuring OpenVPN, and finally doing a test connection to make sure it works. For today's project, you will need a Raspberry Pi Model B or later. I personally will be using the Pi Zero because I happen to already have all the cables and adapters to get it going. Next, you will need a compatible 8 gigabytes or higher micro SD card with noobs or the latest version of Raspbian or Raspbian Lite. A compatible power supply a keyboard or keyboard mouse combo like this one, an ethernet cable or USB wireless adapter, but obviously I prefer a wired connection, an HDMI cable, and a monitor or TV. Now if you are using the Pi Zero like I am, you will need some additional components, a mini HDMI to HDMI converter, micro USB to USB, and a USB to Ethernet adapter if you want to use a wired connection. If you are missing any of these parts, I put a link down in the description for each one. Now that we have all of our parts, we can get started. The first step is to insert the micro SD card with Raspbian or Noobs on it into the Pi. After that, hook up your mini HDMI adapter to the Pi, then plug in the HDMI cable to both the TV or monitor and the adapter. Next, you plug in the micro USB to USB into the Pi, and then the keyboard or wireless adapter for the keyboard mouse combo. Finally, we plug in the power. When we plug in the power, the Pi will start to boot up. Once it has booted all the way up, Open the terminal and type in sudo space raspy dash config. And hit enter. Then arrow down to number 9, advanced options. Hit enter again, then arrow down to A4 SSH and enter. Enter on yes to enable SSH. Then go all the way down to finish. Then shut down the Pi by typing in sudo space shutdown space dash h space now and hit enter. Now that we have enabled SSH, we will be able to do the rest of the setup from any device, whether it be a computer, tablet, phone, whatever. After the Pi has shut down all the way, unplug the power. Then remove the wireless keyboard adapter. Unplug all the HDMI stuff, and from now on, you won't need your monitor. Now take the USB to Ethernet adapter and plug it into the micro USB adapter. Then plug your Ethernet cable into the Ethernet adapter, and then into your router or switch. Finally, plug the power back in. The next step is to forward ports on your router to the Pi. Every router is different, so you may have to Google instructions on how to do it for your specific router. So here I am logged into my router. Find your Raspberry Pi and assign it a static IP address. I am going to use 192.168.1.80. You can choose whatever you want. After that, we need to forward the single UDP port number 1194 to 192.168.1.80, which is our Pi. Then hit apply or save. 
For the actual configuration of the server, we will connect into our Pi using SSH. In Linux or macOS, simply open a terminal prompt and type in SSH space Pi at and then whatever IP address you statically assign to your Pi. In my case, it's 192.168.1.80. Type in yes, hit enter, and then the password for the user. For Android, you can do the same thing using an app called Juice SSH. For Windows, we will be using a program called PuTTY to SSH into our Pi and finish the configuration. In PuTTY, type in the IP address or the host name and then click open. And then yes to accept the Pi's key. Log in as Pi and type in the password for that user. Okay, now that we have enabled SSH, given our Pi a static IP address, and for the UDP port 1194, we should be good to go to actually install and configure the VPN server. All you really have to do is type in this one command. curl space dash l space https install dot pyvpn dot io space pipe space bash. And this script was built so that you can just hit enter to all the defaults and everything will just work. This installer will transform your Raspberry Pi into an open VPN server. Press enter to continue. Enter again. Press tab and then enter. Make sure the IP is correct and then hit enter again. Enter. Enter. Choose Pi as the user. Enter. Enter. Now it's going to install OpenVPN and all the other dependencies to get the server running. I'm going to pause the recording until it's finished. After 5 to 10 minutes, it will finish and come up with this screen. We already set the forwarding port from our router. If you used a different port, you can change it here. If not, you can just tab down to OK and then hit Enter. Enter again to confirm. I'm just going to stick with the recommended level of 2048-bit encryption. You can choose whichever one you want. Tab down and hit enter. Enter again. Like the previous screen said, since this is a personal server, you can leave these as they are. Tab down and enter. Enter. Enter again so it can generate the key. Now this part is going to take 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm going to pause the recording again and I'll see you peeps when it's done. And with the magic of video editing, we are back. I skipped the part where it talks about the external IP address. You should be able to just enter through that part. Unless you have a dynamic DNS that points to your external IP. This next prompt shows us how to create the OpenVPN profile. Hit enter. You don't have to reboot here, but I always like to. And look at that, we are done setting up our server, and our next and last step is to get the OpenVPN profile and test our VPN server. So to test our VPN connection, we're going to wait for it to reboot, and then connect back into our Pi. Then to create a client-side profile, type in the following, pyvpn space add. Name it whatever you want, and put any password in you want, and then put the password in again. Now that the OpenVPN profile has been created, we can find it here. Now we are going to download WinSCP to get our profile off of the server. After it downloads, extract and launch it. Keep the file protocol as SFTP. Type in the internal IP address of the server. Put in the same credentials as before and log in. So in WinSCP, 
This side is your current computer and the right side is the computer you are remoted into. So on the right side, let's navigate to home, pi, ovpns, and then in that folder we will find the config file. Then we can just drag and drop it into your current computer. Then you can distribute it out to all your devices. Let's do a quick test on our phone or some other device that is not on the network to make sure it works. If it works, then on Monday I'll go to work and make sure it works there as well. And it looks like our test is going awesome from our phone. Let's see if it works at work. And it looks like we can get connected in just fine. That is so awesome. Thanks for watching you guys. I really hope that you learned something. Subscribe for more videos like this one and I will see you guys next time.